Hello and welcome to Answering ATPL. In this video, we will discuss sunrise, sunset, and twilight. Later in the video, we will look at how to use the Air Almanac to calculate sunrise, sunset, and twilight time. Before we discuss the definition of sunrise and sunset, we need to understand two important concepts. The first one is declination. To understand declination, please watch my previous video titled Seasonal Changes and Declination. The link is available in the description. The second concept that we need to understand is refraction. Refraction is defined as the change in the direction of a wave passing from one medium to another caused by its change in speed. The simplest example of refraction can be demonstrated using the straw. When we see it in the air, we can see that it is straight, but when the straw inserted into water, it appears to be sharply bent. This difference in appearance is the result of the light wave which permit us to see the straw moving at different speed through the water then through the air. Refraction occurs to any wave including light. Sunrise and Sunset Sunrise is defined as the moment when the upper limb of the sun appears on the horizon. Sunset is defined as the moment when the upper limb of the sun disappears below the horizon. Because of this definition, we will never have a perfect 12 hours of daylight or darkness even at the two equinoxes. The diameter of the sun is 1.3927 million km. Because of its massive distance from the Earth, from the perspective of the observer on the surface of the Earth, the sun diameter appears as a 32 minutes arc. On imaginary Earth with no atmosphere until at any time exactly half of the world will be in darkness and the other half will be in daylight. The tilt of the Earth coupled with Earth orbit around the sun produce declination which causes the hours of daylight to be longer during summer and shorter during winter. The Earth's atmosphere changes the sunlight speed, which causes atmospheric refraction. This refraction extends the coverage of the lighted area as shown on the screen. Atmospheric refraction or bending of the sunlight affects the position of our horizon. On this diagram, we look at the Earth from the top view. An observer is located at position A. If the Earth is without atmosphere, the furthest point that can be seen by the observer is limited by the tangent to the Earth's surface, which can be determined by the spirit level. The tangent to the Earth's surface is known as sensible horizon. Because of atmospheric refraction and curvature of the Earth, the observer visual horizon is extended to 34 minutes of arc below the sensible horizon. This line is known as visual horizon. The combined effect of this factor results in the length of daylight at equinoxes to be 12 minutes longer compared to the period of darkness. An important fact that needs to be remembered, the sun rises and sets at the same local mean time at all places on the same parallel of latitude. By the way, don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon to get notified when I publish a new content. Twilight Twilight is defined 
as period of partial light before sunrise and after sunset. After sunset, the earth does not immediately plunge into darkness. Furthermore, there is some period of partial light or dawn before sunrise. This phenomenon happens because the atmosphere scatters the sunlight. Twilight is divided into three phases, civil twilight, nautical twilight, and astronomical twilight. For general navigation subject, we only interested in the first two phases of twilight. Civil twilight. Evening civil twilight start at sunset and continues until the center of the sun is 6 degrees below the sensible horizon. Morning civil twilight start when the center of the sun is 6 degrees below the sensible horizon and continues until sunrise. During civil twilight, tasks can be performed without the need of artificial light. For example, we can perform takeoff and landing during this period without the need for aircraft light or runway light. Nautical twilight. Nautical twilight occurs when the center of the sun is between 6 and 12 degrees below the sensible horizon. During this period, the stars are visible and it still possible to use the horizon as reference. Night flying start at the end of evening civil twilight and ends at the beginning of morning civil twilight. This statement is the generalization of the night flying period. In reality, the start and end of night flying period are governed by a particular country rule and regulation. Air Almanac Shown on the screen are the three common air almanac sheet that you will encounter during your examination. On the left is the sheet with sunrise and sunset table. In the middle is the sheet with sunrise and morning civil twilight table. And on the right is the sheet with sunset and evening civil twilight table. As you can see, all sheets have a similar layout. For this video, I will only use one table to explain the usage of the air almanac and how we can extract the information from it. The title of the table is placed at the top. On the left is the column for the latitude and the top row is the date, which represent sun declination. In the middle, we have time and all these times are in LMT. As you might notice, there is no column for longitude. The reason why there is no column for longitude An important fact that need to be remembered, the sun rises and set at the same local mean time at all places on the same parallel of latitude. I will use an example to demonstrate the usage of this table. What is the time of sunrise in UTC at position A? 61 degree, 40 minute north, 101 degree, 51 minute east on the 12th of December. First, we enter the table from the top. 12th of December is between 10 and 13. We are interested in these two columns. Next, locate the latitude 61 degree, 40 minute north. Latitude 61 degree, 40 minute north is between 60 degree north and 62 degree north and we are interested in these two rows. The information that we need to address the question is in the intersection between these two columns and two rows. 
As you can see, there are four data in our interest area. To get the answer, we need to interpolate this data. I will insert these four data into a table as shown on the screen. From here, we have two options. Option 1. First, interpolate vertically, then horizontally. Option 2. Interpolate horizontally first, then vertically. My personal preference is option 2. It is easier compared to option 1. For this video, we will use option 2. The technique of interpolation is the same for both options. Next, we will interpolate the data within 62 degree north row. To carry out the interpolation operation, we need to compare the ratio of changes between the two dates and the LMT data, or it can be written as change in date ratio to change in time. 13 minus 10 ratios to 0915 minus 0910. Three days change in date is equivalent to five minute changes in time. For every one day change in date, the changes in time should be 5 over 3 minutes or 1 day change in date is equivalent to 1.7 minute change in time. If we look back at the table from the 13th of December to the 10th of December, the time is reducing because the 12th of December is one day before the 13th of December the sunrise time will be reduced by 1.7 minutes from the sunrise time on the 13th of December. Thus, time on 12th of December equal 0915 minus 1.7 minutes. Time on the 12th of December equal 0913 decimal 3 or approximately 0913 LMT. We will now conduct interpolation operation for 60 degree north data. Changes in date ratio to changes in time. 13 minus 10 ratio to 0850 minus 0854. 3 days change in date is equivalent to 4 minute changes in time. For every 1 day change in date, the changes in time should be 4 over 3 minutes or 1 day change in date is equivalent to 1.3 minute change in time. Thus, time on the 12th of December equals 0854 minus 1.3 minutes. Time on the 12th of December equals 0852 decimal 7 or approximately 0853 LMT. We have completed two horizontal interpolation. Now we need to do one vertical interpolation along the 12th of December column. Latitude change ratio to change in time. 60 degree minus 62 degree ratio to 0853 minus 0913 for every minus 2 degree change in latitude is equivalent to minus 20 minutes change in time 1 degree change in latitude is equivalent to 20 over 2 minute change in time thus 1 degree change in latitude is equivalent to 10 minute change in time 1 degree 40 minutes change in latitude is equal to 10 minutes time 1 degree 40 minutes. Thus, 1 degree 40 minutes change in latitude is equivalent to 16.7 minutes or approximately 17 minutes. Time at latitude 61 degree 40 minutes north on the 12th of December is equal to 0853 plus 
zero zero one seven equals zero nine one zero LMT. Next, we need to convert LMT into UTC. By referring to the figure on the screen, we all know that one zero one degree fifty one minute east is to the east of the prime meridian. LMT increase as we move east. The explanation of this rule can be found in my other video titled Time, LMT, GMT, UTC and ST. Link is available in the description. Thus, we can say that LMT equals UTC plus change in time. Change in time is the time it takes for the mean sun to travel from 101 degree 51 minute east to prime meridian. Change in time equal change of longitude divided by 15 degree. Change in time equal 101 degree 51 minute divided 15. Change in time equal 6 hours 47 minute and 24 second or approximately 06 Four seven, LMT equals UTC plus change in time. Zero nine one zero equal UTC plus zero six four seven. UTC equals zero nine one zero minus zero six four seven. UTC equals zero two two three. Thus, sunrise at position A on the 12th of December is at 0223 UTC. What do you think of this video? Please let me know in the comment section below. And if you find the video beneficial, please like it and share with others. By doing so, you will help other people to find the video. If you want to learn more about ATPL or other aviation related stuff, subscribe now by clicking on the round subscribe icon. Please check out my other video by clicking on the rectangular box. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.